Hey sword friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Brittany. Today I want to introduce you to a new product that I think is really, really exciting. It's a little bit controversial, but it is definitely getting the HEMA community talking. So what I have here is plastic armor. Yeah, it's pretty controversial, but I am so excited for it. I was given this arm harness as a test by Mac Armor. That's the creator. They are based in the Czech Republic. And they wanted my opinion, they wanted my feedback, and I was more than happy to give it because plastic armor is actually really, really exciting for me. Before people start getting too critical about having pieces of equipment like this, first thing I'm gonna say is just let people enjoy things. Just consider it, you might be happier. So a lot of folks are like, well, why would you bother with plastic? You might as well just get steel. Plastic is modern, it looks too goofy, and you know, it, it starts kind of, getting away from what we're trying to do as like historical martial artists. One of the factors that makes plastic really appealing is its price point. It is significantly cheaper than steel and having something like plastic armor available now makes something like harness fectin or armored fighting within HEMA a lot more accessible to a greater number of people. The other thing is this was really exciting for me as a sword fighting instructor, as a HEMA instructor. Um, I've always wanted to introduce harness fectin into my studio and we've dabbled in it a little bit, but in order to really teach it on a big scale, you really need armor and it's, it's hard to kind of simulate that, at least I've found. And having these kinds of pieces and knowing that Mac Armor is intending to have more pieces available, like legs, chest, things like that, that ends up making it much easier for me to implement that within my curriculum in the school. So it makes it very accessible, not just for individuals, but now I can maybe get like a loaner kit of armor put together that it doesn't have to necessarily fit perfectly, but it just needs to fit well enough to get an idea of how some of those plays in our effect books actually work for armor. However, some people aren't necessarily interested in having a full suit of plastic armor. Some folks just want added protection. You're starting to see a trend with like new Spez jackets, for example, having plates on the shoulders, on the biceps, the elbows and the forearms, having leg protection that looks a lot more like traditional armor. So this is actually a new trend where folks in HEMA want to get away a little bit from the idea of Bloss Fectin. They want to armor up a little bit more so they can still have the mobility of doing like HEMA tournaments, but with a little bit more protection, they can go home at the end of the day and not be totally banged and bruised up. That's a personal choice. It's not how I roll, um, but people who do do that, I have no problem with it and I totally respect that choice. This ends up being a really wonderful stylistic option if you wanted to add some extra armor to your Spez jacket, for example. However, your Spez jacket would require points to be put in. Most HEMA jackets do not come with arming points because this is sort of a newer trend. However, you can get them added to Spez jackets. I do believe that's an option. And it's also really, really easy to do yourself. I actually have another YouTube video about pointing my original Spez jacket. All right, let's talk about this neat new piece of equipment made by Mac Armor. This is made of HDPE. It's a really high density plastic, so it's going to be super impact resistant. Um, it is a little bit flexible, but it's not super malleable. These ones ended up being a original pair that was sent to me. They are, as most things are, if you're you know, familiar with my channel, too big for me. However, it didn't stop me from giving them a try. What I'd like to show you is how these sit on the arm. Basically what I have is three pieces. Up here, sort of like a pauldron, um, it'll sit over my shoulder and it'll point into the top of my Spez jacket. So it'll sit right there. Whereas if I put this on the other shoulder, so there is a right and left side, if I put this on the other side, it gets in the way of my elbow being able to bend. So that's kind of how you can tell which one is right and left. Um, so this one goes here, little gap here. Now, normally I would put the next piece on here. Um, it'll also point into my jacket. Now, the forearms were a little bit long, obviously. Um, they kind of come down over my wrist, which is not a good thing. What I would want is for it to sit a little bit higher and then that little gap there at my wrist gets covered with like the bell on a gauntlet. Um, I don't have those right now. So obviously these are huge on me, but again, we make do. Um, that little gap again where my elbow would sit. So hopefully that'll stay before I actually get to pointing it on. And then this elbow here locks in here, 
points to the jacket, points to the other pieces, and then ideally this is sort of closing that gap here like so. Now, of course, this isn't pointed on, so it's gonna shift a little bit, and it's also really big on me, um, but that's okay, still worth trying out and seeing how it goes. <laughs> Before I get into the details of this piece of equipment's effectiveness, I'd like to cover some of the little details that went into the manufacture of this piece. You can see a lot of the nice fluting right in here. Every piece is articulated, so it gets a lot of motion right in here. And this is what makes armor really effective, is a lot of that articulation and the overlapping plates. You can see on the inside here how the construction works. Right here, it's riveted to this strip that allows it to articulate. And it doesn't just articulate one way, it, it goes back and forth. So this is extremely flexible. And that's it's something that really impressed me was the mobility on this. You'll also notice the straps in here on top of the points. Now this is normal, this is, this, this is not revolutionary. This comes like with normal steel armor that you get. So this is not like way out there, a new design. Um, but I do like that it was, you know, the detail was put into this. And then of course the red points. You can change this out for any color. You can change the points however you want. Um, I'm just gonna pull them out right now. So they just come right out and they're just little laces. And those are easy to like replace and customize because they, they will get chewed up, they will get cut and they will need to be replaced. You also have the little holes here. They are reinforced. There's no sharp edges on here at all. This plastic has been finished really, really well. Um, one of the things that kind of annoys me about a lot of plastic pieces is they are very commonly ending up with like sharp edges by accident, just maybe from molding or something. Um, and this has been finished really, really nicely, which is awesome to see. A lot of detail, a lot of care. You can tell that this just had so much time and thought put into it. And I actually need to get the armor pointed onto my jacket. That's right. So this is an old Spez jacket. Um, I've had it for a really long time. I do not use it for competitions anymore. Um, I've replaced it with my red one, but that's kind of why I decided to experiment with this one and get some points on it. So I had originally pointed my jacket, which you can see in another video, so that I could end up doing Boohurt and actually getting like steel armor. So I figured this would be a really great medium to try and carry this new plastic armor. Again, we're gonna start up here. Normally what I would do is maybe wear the jacket and then put it on and then point it from there. Um, but, you know, here I am. So I already have the ties in here on my jacket. So I'm actually gonna just remove the ties that um, came with it. Okay. Again, getting this one high up on the shoulder. So I have more points on here than I actually need for this specific armor. Um, the other pieces I had had like multiple floating pieces. Whereas in this case, I don't need to do that. There's only three pieces that I need to attach. So this goes right on here. You can see I just slipped the two ties through the little eyelets there, put it right down snug onto my jacket, tie it up. All right, so we have all three pieces of the plastic armor pointed onto my left arm. I'm just gonna put the jacket on, kind of see where it sits. And then I will adjust it as I need to. Again, you can start to see how big everything is on me. <laughs> All right, so straps. And there we are. So you can tell this isn't really my size. It's a little bit big, kind of bulky. And of course I had done the points on my jacket for a different set of armor and not for this. So it's not seated quite accurately. Um, it could do with a little bit of adjustment. However, I'm actually able to get a good amount of motion in here, a little bit low down here where it's starting to kind of jam my wrist a little bit. But let's be honest, if you're sword fighting, you really shouldn't be having a whole lot of this going on. You want good wrist structure, so it shouldn't impede me too much. Um, but I guess that's what we're gonna find out. So I can get my arms up, which is good. Get my arms out, I can bend them, I can do all the things. It's a little bit loud. <laughs> um, but I think it looks really, really cool. 
Again, if I could just adjust this a little bit, the points on here are not quite right, but I'll make do. So now the next step, I need to point the whole other side here and then I subjected we'll myself to it. varying degrees of power for different strikes and none of them really were all that bad. Now, granted, these could be, like, a lot harder, but I certainly wasn't fearing for my safety. I think these actually did a really great job. They also really didn't get super damaged either, which was really excellent. Now for the mobility test. What I was looking for was shoulder impingement, or how the plates interacted if they were digging into me or anything like that. Through my cuts, I didn't really have any issue, actually. I thought for sure that the plates would move a lot more on the arms and they would need more adjustment afterwards, but they didn't. They actually stayed in place really well. The arming points did their job, and the additional straps that came with them also held them in place nicely. Moving through different guard positions was also pretty seamless. It didn't seem to impede me any more than just normally wearing my spez jacket. Adding the mask didn't change too much for mobility, although there was a little bit less freedom for the shoulder plates to move. Obviously the mask adds a little bit of bulk, but for the most part, I really didn't even notice the arms there. If anything impedes my movement, it's definitely the spaz heavies, but that's not the point of this video. In summary, I love where the community is going in utilizing plastic armor. I think this is going to be really, really excellent, and to see that MAC armor is ahead of the curve on this with beautiful and effective merchandise makes me all the more excited. I can feel it. Arms. Oh god! Can you feel that one? No, I can't! Yeah. <laughs>